Hello everyone and welcome to my video on what's new in Kafka 2.2. Now I'm going to try to make this a series. I've done one for what's new in Kafka 2.1 and everyone really liked it. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna make another one. So to me, if you subscribe to my channel right now, you'll be aware of all the new updates. I'll try to make one video per Kafka release. I'm trying to be on time and I really hope that you will understand better what's happening in the new version of Kafka. This release is very exciting. There's a CLI change that I really like and other internal changes that will really improve the stability and the performance of Kafka. So I hope you're really excited for this video. Let's do a deep dive into the changes now. So the first thing is that this upgrade is normal. So in 2.1, once we had a schema change in the consumer offsets topic, we could not roll back. But with Kafka 2.2, you can easily roll back to 2.1 if you want to. The upgrade process is the same as the usual. So I do recommend you go on the Kafka website just to get all the detailed instructions. Now first, we're going to talk about the Kafka internal. So let's have a look at them. Number one is one of the most exciting change you have a separation of the controller connection request from the data plane. This is an optional change, but it does bring a lot of performance improvements and stability. So right now there's a unique port for both data request and controller request. That means that all your controller requests can be problematic because they can be queued with the data request and take a long time to produce, and they will introduce a concept of stale metadata. So there's been this skip, and now we have a dedicated endpoint just for controller requests. That means that they have a higher priority than your data request, and they're processed separately, therefore solving that problem of stale metadata. So what does it look like? Well, today we have broker one and broker two, and they both have the port 9092 exposed to each other, and this is where the data and the controller request go through. But with this skip in Kafka 2.2, we have the same port 9092 for data request, but we can now dedicate a new port, call it 9091, that is going to be dedicated to have the controller communication between the brokers. So I'm really excited about that change because if you have a high volume, high traffic Kafka cluster, you know, bringing this change will definitely improve the controller request and make sure they go through with higher priority. So what does that look like in the config changes? Well, before we used to have that, so we have advertised listeners to be internal port 9092. And we say, by the way, from the listener security protocol, the map, we're going to map the internal protocol to plain text. And now we have a new configs. So now we're going to add and the advertised listeners, we're going to add a controller endpoints. And then we're going to say the port, the port is 9091. And then in the listener security protocol map, we're going to say controller is also plain text. And then we're going to have a new setting, which is control play listener name equals controller, basically indicating to Kafka that all the controller requests should go through that port 9091. So there's a few steps to be able to smoothly upgrade to separating your controller request from your data plan request. And I invite you to look at this skip documentation to get the upgrade notes. But overall, I think it's quite easy. It's just a few rolling restarts you have to do. But I'm really excited about that change because I think it will bring tremendously good stability to Kafka clusters that have a tremendous amount of data flowing through them. Okay, other internal change that's really important is that the min average and max metrics now have a default standard value. So before, when you started a broker, min, max, and average doesn't make really sense because not much activity has happened. And so in that case, the metrics will just output their default value. And they were very, very different. For max, we had min minus infinite. For average, we had zero. And for min, we had this double dot max value. So it was really inconsistent. Now, all the min, average, and max metrics will input NAN for not a number default values. So if you do have a metrics collection or if you have alarms and you do rely on these default values, well, make sure you do change your alarms because the default values are going to change and now they're NAN, not a number. Now, other internal fixes are worth noting but not worth explaining too long. First of all, KIP 207 is that the offsets returned by list offset response should be monolithically increasing during partition leader change. And so that basically fixes a crash that was happening in Spark uh, when it expected the offsets to be increasing over time, but it didn't. And so this is an internal change. You don't need to change your applications whatsoever to take care of this uh, performance improvement and this stability improvement only. The second one is that if you were restarting a broker and it was receiving outdated control requests, it would still process them. And so that was a big problem. So now every time you do re uh, restart your broker, there's going to get a new epoch number. And if the request was not meant for that epoch number, it's just going to be ignored. Basically, 
making sure that your brokers can be restarted and not receive stale requests or outdated requests. So this has become more and more a problem as now the brokers were able to restart very, very quickly. And now this has been inducing, you know, this new problem, but it has been fixed by the skip 380. So again, not a change uh, to be aware of, you know, nothing to change on your end, just upgrade your brokers and you will get this increased stability. Finally, uh, KIP 394 requires member ID for original joint group request. So basically, in case that wasn't specified, a new consumer joining would make basically a memory burst for the broker and that was really bad. So now the brokers are protected against that issue and the change is internal and does not impact well-behaving clients. So that's it for the, all the internal changes. Now let's go and look at the changes for our Kafka clients. So number one is going to be a very important one. I don't think many people were using the default group ID, but just in case you were using it, basically it used to be the empty string for the default group ID, now it's becoming null. And so consumers that use the empty string group ID must set it explicitly. So I hope you were not using it, but if you did, you need to set explicitly that you're using the group ID empty string. By the way, the use of this empty group ID will be deprecated over time and client support for empty group ID will be removed in Kafka 3.x. So overall, try not to use the default group ID, try to define a normal group ID like anyone else. Other changes for the client is that KIP 389 introduced a configurable consumer group size limit. So that means that, for example, if you have too many consumers, say for example, over 250, then whenever one consumer joins or goes away, there's a huge rebalance that happens. So Kafka does recommend you keep your consumer group under a defined size. And so you can set now a new configuration called group max size, which has a default of infinite, not to impact old behavior, but you should set it to a reasonable value. For example, 250 is a good value, just to make sure that your consumer groups do not get too big and you still get good stability. There's also a few API change in the producer and admin client when you were to close them. So it used to be close long time unit and now it's close duration, just to be consistent with the consumer.close API change that was done in a previous version. So overall for clients, very easy changes, but quite exciting. Now what about admin and CLI? Well, to me, this is the most exciting one. So the topic command uses admin clients. And to you, you may be like, okay, what does that mean really? Well, I'd say finally, finally, when you do Kafka topics.sh, now you can use minus minus bootstrap server as an option instead of zookeeper. That means that you can finally tell people that are learning Kafka that Kafka topics should be created by talking to Kafka and not to zookeeper. The old zookeeper option is still available for now, but I'm sure it'll disappear over time. So how do we create a topic in Kafka 2.2? This way, Kafka topics, bootstrap server, localhost, 9092, list. Very, very easy. Now other changes, KIP 351, we have the under main ISR option to the describe topics command, and that's to help identifying topics that will generate errors in case your producer have x equals all. So it's a really nice change if you need to understand which topics will be problematic. Kip 183, which is change preferred leader replica election command, basically to use the admin, admin client. So now we do have the bootstrap server option added for this command, Kafka preferred replica election.sh. And then finally, a minus minus help command has been added to all the Kafka CLI. Before, if you wanted to get the documentation, you would need to just type the common name. But now, you know, Kafka CLIs are more in line with other CLIs out there on the on the online software community where you do minus minus help to get that documentation. Okay, cool. Let's get going. So Kafka streams, what's happening? Number one is that there's a new operator called flat transform and flat transform values. So currently, if you wanted to do this, you have Kafka streams .transform, and that transforms each record into zero or more records. And if you wanted to apply a transformer, which was stateful, basically the signature of kstream.transform was transforming a single value pair as an output record. And if you wanted to transform more records out of it, there was a processor context forward method that you would use, but that was completely untyped. And so by using this forward method on the context, the user was losing strong typing on the output records. And that was a big problem for type safety. So now there's a small change. If you want to use flat transform, that means that you can produce zero or more records uh, zero, one, two, how many you want based on a new API. And this API is like this, it's a bit boring, but if you look at the transformer API now, you can have a transform that has a signature of returning an iterable of key value and key and value are typed. And so the good thing about it is that now you can return multiple records as part of the transfer and it's still going to be type safe. So dot transform does not change in terms of API, but the documentation will discourage you to use it if you're using it for sending more than one record to remain backward compatible. But overall, if you're using transform 
and are creating multiple records out of transform, consider migrating to flat transform and make your programs a little bit better. Other changes is KIP uh, 393, which is a new time window survey. And so this is basically to fix the problem with the changelog topic. And so there is now overloaded constructors for this survey. And so if you're using this survey, make sure to read the KIP. Basically, it's only when you're having windowed topics and you want to deserialize them correctly, then this is a survey that has been fixed for you. Other changes in Kafka Streams that are worth noting, 3786, uh, which is, for example, that every resource in Kafka Streams that was closable, so they had a close method, now implements auto-closable. That means that you can use it with a try resource statement. 414 is that now all the client IDs of all the clients in Kafka Streams are exposed in the thread metadata objects. So that means you do have access to the client IDs of the consumer client, resource consumer, admin client, and producer client. And that's really helpful when you want to do metrics, gathering, or troubleshooting, or consumer management during a scale-in event. Finally, there's been just small internal change called KIP420, but they had to go through a KIP, is to add a single value fetch for session store, but apparently it's an internal performance improvement, and it does not impact you as a developer. Now let's talk about security and see what's new, and I think there's some really cool security stuff as well. For example, KIP368 allows SASL connection to periodically re-authenticate. So what does that mean? Well, right now, before 2.2, Kafka connections are long-lived. And so that means that some security mechanism like SSL OAuth bearer are more secure when a client needs to be re-authenticated, so disconnected and then reconnected, just to make sure that the connection and the credentials are still valid. And so now there is a new configuration in Kafka called Connections Max Re-Auth Millisecond, which basically will set how often the clients need to re-authenticate to Kafka to make sure that their connection is still valid. And so it's not a change that you need to have on your clients, but because if you upgrade them to 2.2, they will know how to re-handle authentication. But as soon as you enable that setting, you need to make sure that all your clients have been upgraded to 2.2 before you do any other change. So if you plan on using this setting to basically have more secure Kafka setup with re-authentication enabled, make sure to read the upgrade notes on the KIP page. Another really good one is that if you're using SSL as your authentication mechanism in Kafka, as mutual authentication, now you have a configuration to build a custom SSL principal name without specifying a class. So by default, a SSL authenticated user looks like this. It's a very long string and really only the first field is used, the CN, but the rest is unknown. Usually people just want to extract whatever is in the CN to use as their principal name. And so now you have a new setting called SSL principal mapping rules, where you can specify some very complicated rules, but the idea of these rules is that you would extract what's in the CN. So there's a nice ma mapping pattern and there's a nice table provided on the KIP page that I do recommend you look at if you're using SSL based authentication. And that would be really helpful for you not to load your own class in Kafka to basically extract the right information out of uh, this very long principal name. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I know there's a lot of content, a lot of changes always, but hopefully I helped you understand what is going to be important for you. I think the most notable changes is going to be around separating the data plane and the controller plane request, very important, and also the KIP around the CLI command, Kafka topics that is now using Bootstrap server, but maybe there's a few other changes you picked up from my video and hopefully help you understand how you can make your Kafka better, more stable, and change a little bit your programs to improve. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please share it with your friends. Please comment and let me know how I did, and I will see you in the next video.